I'm Becky Stern. Today I'm going to show you how to cast rings out of resin. The first thing you'll need is something to make a mold from. I modeled this ring in 3D software and printed it out in um, a type of plastic that comes out of a computer printing machine. You'll need something to make your mold from. You can make that from this kind of silicone, which you kind of, it's really messy. You need a specific kind of scale in order to measure it, but you get a nice mold like this. Or you can use this material, which you measure in equal parts by volume, which makes it really easy to just use a measuring cup. It's safe for your skin, a lot nicer. You need something to cast your rings out of. We're going to use this clear plastic uh, craft resin I got at the craft store. And it needs some hardener and any pigments you want to color your jewelry with. You'll need um, containers to mix your resin in. I'm using these plastic cups that I cut the tops off of. It's just kind of wasteful, so you'll need one for every ring you want to make. Um, you'll need some sticks to mix that with, some turpentine to clean up the resin if you make a mess while it's still not hard, and um, I'm going to put this little electronic component in my ring for decoration. To make your mold, mix your mold materials half part A and half part B. You can use a volume measuring cup to measure equal parts of each. You don't need to wear gloves for this part because this stuff is safe and non-toxic. But if you're using the pourable silicone, make sure you wear gloves. Once you've kneaded it for a full minute, it should have changed color, sort of, to a light blue. Then you can take your ring original, in my case this 3D printout that I sanded down to be nice and smooth, and uh, you can press it flat on the table. You're going to want to make your mold in such a way that you can get the rings out later. So I'm going to have one side be the open side. So I'm going to face that down, and I'm going to start putting this stuff in, starting with the middle part to make sure that there's no bubbles. And you can pick it up and check, cheat a little bit. Just make sure you don't overlap it on the underside. Then you can use more and come around the outside. Now you want to give your mold a flat bottom so that you can rest it on a surface to pour your resin in. I'm going to use this flat plastic container just to make an indentation. It's so warm outside that it's already starting to set up. Follow the directions on the back of the package, which say to leave it for 10 minutes, and it'll cure, and you can take your ring out then. And then you can see it on the bottom. We want to make sure it's totally flat. So it'll cure in 10 minutes, and we can take the plastic original out. And then we'll want to wait a full hour before we pour any resin into it. If you do choose to use the pourable silicone, you can take your original and glue it to the bottom of a container and then pour in the mixed liquid silicone over it and let it set like this. And then when you pull it out, you'll have a nice mold like this. Just be careful because this stuff is really noxious. You should read the material safety data sheet before you get started and wear gloves and do it in outside or a well-ventilated area. Once your mold is cured for about an hour, you can pop out your original. It should be pretty flexible. You can just kind of weasel it out there. Then you have a mold. These are what your two molds will look like. This is the poured silicone and this is the kneaded silicone. Now we'll move on to how to actually cast it in resin. So I've got my plastic cup that I've cut down, a wooden skewer to stir it with, I've got my casting resin, and I've got my catalyst for the resin. I'm wearing these nitrile gloves because this stuff is really nasty on your skin. You can wear latex gloves or whatever keeps your hands away from it. Now follow the directions on the back for how much catalyst to add but when in doubt, add a little more than you would if you were scared. All right, so add a little bit of resin. That's actually too much um, to make your ring. We'll pour two of these at once, so maybe that'll be 
an appropriate amount. Then take your catalyst, and I'm going to add um, about 15 drops of this stuff. Okay. Now, it says to stir it for a good long time before you pour it. If you don't stir it enough, your rings will come out sticky, and they'll never get as hard as they're supposed to. So really follow the directions for how long it says to stir it. Okay, I've mixed it for a good long minute there. Now, you want to make sure you don't get this on anything. It's pretty gross. So you can just put your stick down over here. Now we're going to pour it into our mold. Because I'm embedding something, this little electronics part, this little capacitor over here, just for decoration, um, I'm going to pour this in two layers. This other one I'll pour all at once. I couldn't quite get the bottom of my mold flat because this hardened up much faster than it would have if I were inside because it's about 100 degrees outside. So take your cup of resin and pour it very carefully into the mold. This one, I'm only going to do about a third of the way up. Then I'm going to take this little guy. Bend his leads around. And stick them inside. And then I'm going to finish pouring to cover. If you're casting a heavy thing and you want to embed it, just, um, you're going to have to do this in two layers. You can see it's so warm outside. This is already starting to set up. Normally, this won't take, this won't set up so quickly on you. It's kind of, this is kind of ridiculous. Now let those sit and cure for as long as the resin instructions say for. It's probably going to be around 20 minutes to half an hour. When you're fairly confident that the resin is all set and it doesn't feel too sticky to the touch, you can pop it out of your mold. Just the same way you did the original when you made the mold. And then to let it cure completely, let it sit out for another hour. This one might be a little funky because the second layer was already pretty set when we put this in. But you can see we've got our little cast object. And then this bubbly part on the side I'll just grind off with the Dremel later. And we'll know now that we have much shorter working time than it says it does on the package because it's so hot outside. So to make a new one, just repeat the process. And then if you're worried about bubbles, you can just kind of pick it up and drop it a little bit. It'll help any bubbles rise to the surface. And again, I'm doing this outside because it's really stinky. And it can't be good for your brain cells if you do it inside. So I've let these sit a little bit longer. They should come out a little bit less bubbly than the other ones. So you can see I've got this bright blue ring. Might be still a little bit sticky because the inside of the mold, uh, the resin inside the mold hasn't touched the air. so. You can let them dry outside for another hour or so, or inside if it's, if it's in excess of 100 degrees where you live. But they won't stick to the silicone, so you should be in good shape there. And then any sizing you want to do, the way I size these rings is um, I made the, the original mold the smallest size I wanted to make the rings, and then if I wanted to make bigger ones, I just um, used a sanding bit on a Dremel and went inside here and made the hole bigger. And that's it. We have beautiful rings. This one with the
cast capacitor and it's a little bit chewy on one side because the resin set up so fast, but I can sand that down and make a smaller profile ring even.